Okay, this setup is called the fine beam tube. It's used to determine the specific charge of the electron. You have an electron gun over here, and it's going to fire an electron in this direction like this. And these coils here will create a magnetic field around going through that um, glass tube. So the electron will start to do circular motion. Like this. What we will have to do is measure the radius. We'll also measure the accelerating voltage here. So I've got the radius. And finally, we can determine the magnetic field, flux density created by this, these coils. And this will allow us to work out the specific charge of the electron. So here's another setup. So the anode voltage is what we'll be using. The filament voltage is just for the thermionic emission. So that doesn't determine the speed. So we use anode voltage Q times V equals half M V squared. So that gives us the speed at which the electrons will leave. Now, if because electrons are going upwards here, the current is actually going in this direction because current is defined as a rate of flow of positive charge. So if we apply Fleming's left hand rule with current going downwards, field into the page, and the force is toward the center, which is why it does circular motion. Okay, as it goes around, um, the force is always toward the center. So that's the current here. It's a force. So the magnetic field actually doesn't do any work, so it should have a constant kinetic energy. Uh, because it's doing circular motion, we can have mv squared of r equals bqv, which is a magnetic force. Measuring the voltage used to accelerate the electron, the magnetic flux density and the radius will allow me to find the specific charge of the electron, the charge divided by the mass. Firstly, the work done by the accelerating voltage is equal to the kinetic energy gained. And when it's doing circular motion, the centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force. We can cancel out one of the Vs from both sides here. And then I'm actually going to make V the subject because I don't know what V is, and so I'm going to use it to elim I'm going to eliminate the V from both sides. So I'm going to put the V in here so I can eliminate it. So I get Q voltage capital V half times mass times BQR over M squared. This gives me QV equals half m b squared q squared r squared over m squared i can cancel out m from the top and the bottom here one of the m's i can cancel out q from both sides one of the q's there and then i'm going to rearrange to make q over m the subject so i get 2v divided by b squared r squared equals a specific charge which is charge over mass here we have a set of data from the fine beam tube experiment. So I'm going to use that using the equation we just determined to find the specific charge of the electron. So 2 times the voltage divided by b squared over uh, times r squared. So 3.5 times into the minus 3 teslas squared times the radius. And if you do this, you get 1.72 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. Okay. At that point in time, they knew the smallest specific charge they knew was this, which is the hydrogen ion. In other words, a proton. So when they compare these two together, they realize whatever this new particle that they've discovered has got a much higher specific charge. So so the conclusion from that is, in fact, we can work out how much times bigger. So if we do 1.72 times 10 to the 11 over 9.58 times 10 to the 7, it's times 1, 1,800, approximately 1,008 times bigger. So the conclusion from this, either the charge of this new particle, which is the electron, is 
1800 times bigger or mass is much smaller so of course we know now that it's the second one um, that's true so we know that this is true but at that point in time they didn't know which one it was okay, the beam form isn't a perfect circle the radius is actually going to decrease as it goes around the reason for this is because as a, as the electron goes around it's going to collide with the atoms in the way the gas atoms even though it's low pressure there's still going to be some gas atoms when it collides with these it will cause the electrons in the gas atom to excite and de-excite and this is what releases the photons that which we can see and use to measure the radius otherwise we wouldn't be able to see it so but every time it collides so collisions there's going to be a loss in ke and if it loses ke using the equation bqv equals mv squared of r if i rearrange this to give r as a subject you can see that the radius is a proportion to the velocity so as it as this velocity decreases the radius also decreases